Hey everyone, it's Scott Roberts from Explore Scientific and today I'm going to be talking about the this 70 millimeter 400 millimeter focal length refractor from Explore One. What I have here is all the boxes. There's three main boxes, three main compartments. One's got accessories in it uh, that would include like uh, the eyepieces, um, an erect image prism, uh, red dot finder, and something called an accessory tray that can hold those eyepieces. Here's the optical tube assembly. This is the telescope. And then uh, in this box over here is the tripod. And so it's a real fast setup. I'm gonna show you how to use it and uh, you know, assemble it, use it, and um, ways that you can get the best observing through that instrument. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna set up the tripod. So it's inside this bag here. And this plastic will just slip off. And we just, what we do is we pop the legs open like so. You'll notice here is uh, just a little uh, nubbin that's got a threaded hole in it. And that is where, that is where we're gonna attach the accessory tray. And the accessory tray just has a uh, threaded uh, nut that's already installed in it. So I'm just gonna take this like so and put this on and spin it. And there we go, we've got our accessory tray loaded on here. And this adds actually some rigidity, also a little bit of rigidity to the, to the uh, tripod because uh, weight of the eyepieces that are down there just kind of press down on the bottom of the tripod a little bit. And um, that allows us to uh, get some more stability. Then what we do is we take the plastic off of the handle. This is sometimes called a pan handle, but uh, um, there is a threaded hole on the back of this. And so when I thread that in, this allows me to lock the altitude or the, the up and down motion of the, uh, of the tripod head. And it's the tripod head where the uh, telescope fits on. So you see when I, when I loosen this, it's really loose, but if I tighten it, it can get locked all the way. And if I semi-tighten it, it's like I have like a clutch action, okay? I can move it still, but let it go. Then what we'll do is we're gonna put the telescope on. This is a, 70 millimeter aperture refractor. It's called a refractor. This is the first types of telescopes ever made. Um, and uh, there's assembly of this is like super simple. In fact, this telescope I think is one of the easiest telescopes to assemble that's out there. So we just have this little notch here. It's gonna fit into a little hole here. And you'll notice that I'm unthreading this knob, and when I do that and I slide in, it just, it goes down all the way flat. It goes all the way flat up against the uh, tripod head. And what I do is I tighten this down. This is kind of like a safety screw. And then I, there's a, there's a knob up underneath here and a threaded hole. And so this holds on the whole tube assembly onto the top of the tripod, okay? I'm just gonna leave that at like at half tension so that I can still move the, the, uh, the head, okay? This is the focuser of the telescope and that draw tube goes in and out. So, in order to look for the telescope, I have to have this installed this is called a correct image prism. This makes the image right side up, left to right correct, so that you can do land viewing with it, but you can also do astronomy with it as well. You know, uh, the 70 millimeter aperture of this telescope uh, gathers enough light for you to see nebula and star clusters and galaxies, but to see those objects, you have to go out where it's really dark. No street lights, no 
uh, lights on in the house, no car lights on, okay? It needs to be dark. In fact, it needs to be so dark that when you look up in the sky, uh, you want to go out large, largely on a moonless night. Uh, it needs to be so dark that you can see the Milky Way with the naked eye. And if you can, then the light grabbing, the light intensifying part of the 70 millimeter aperture can let you see galaxies and nebular clouds, uh, bright comets, uh, that kind of thing. Um, you're not going to see the most distance of objects. Of course, you would need, need a much larger telescope to do that. But you're going to be really impressed with what the 70 millimeter telescope can do. I have used telescopes uh, in this uh, aperture range before, and I've seen things like the Whirlpool Galaxy, and the Whirlpool Galaxy is like over 30 million light years away. Of course, you can see the moon, you can see Saturn with it. Um, Saturn impresses most people because you can see its beautiful rings. Saturn's about 900 million miles away. But just one light year is 5.9 trillion miles, so only looking 900 million miles is not so far away at all, is it? There are two eyepieces that come with this telescope, and one is a, one is a uh, 20 millimeter, and so here's the 20. It's got the bigger lens, it's longer, okay? And so we have on this side, there's just a little set screw that I release, and that allows me to toss this in. At this point, if I want to, I can just aim it outside, and I can look at, um, I can look at things uh, uh, through my window. But one of the things I'm gonna notice by looking through a window is that things don't look that sharp. And why is that? There's a couple of reasons. One is, is that window glass is not optically flat. And a telescope resolves all detail, including the distortion coming from the window. So you need to go outside with the telescope to get the sharpest views. The other thing that happens when you look from inside a building to outside is that heat waves rising off the building cause distortion and that softens images. So you're not gonna see really sharp images of the moon or planets or anything by looking from inside a building to outside. We have two eyepieces here. I'm taking the other one out. And this one right here, this is a six millimeter. So you got a 20 and a six. So you always start observing with the low power eyepiece first because it's getting a wider field of view. It's making it easy to find objects up there. Okay, so this is, this is a 400 millimeter telescope. You divide 40 by 400 by 20 and you got what, about 20 magnifications. So um, when you go to the six millimeter, you're stepping up to a considerably more magnification, but this isn't getting you more detail. It's just making the image look bigger for you, okay? Detail and distance is all handled by the 70 millimeter aperture of the telescope. So always start with the lowest power eyepiece first, find the object, and then if you want more magnification, step in with the six millimeter. The last thing to assemble on the telescope is the red dot finder. And the red dot finder has a battery in it and has some adjustments. So assembly, again, like most Explorer One products, is very easy to do. There's just a shoe uh, uh, piece right here, and there's a, there's a foot on this, and so this is the leading edge of the red dot finder, and this is the looking edge when we, when we look through it. And all I gotta do is I just gotta push that in there, and it's all set up. Now I can do a couple of more things here. I've got on the red dot finder, I'll pull this up a little bit closer for you. There's a piece of plastic. There's a plastic tab right here. This is separating the battery from the contact. And so I pulled out the plastic and now I've got, uh, I've got uh, the battery engaged and now I can turn on the red dot and I think you can see the red dot turn on here, perhaps. It's a little, might be hard to see, but the red dot's right there. And now what I do is I take the telescope outside at night, okay? 
and I look at something as far away as I can with the 20 millimeter eyepiece installed. And the reason why I want to look as far away as I can, and if, you know, if it's, if it's a mountaintop that is two miles away, great, okay? Um, but I, I find the top of the mountain and I find a tree, and then what I do is I look through the red dot, keep both eyes open, and when you do and you look straight through it the way I'm looking through it right now, what you see is a red dot. It looks like it's out at the, uh, the distance of the object I'm looking at. I make sure that the mountaintop is centered, and then what I'll do is I adjust a little knob that's down underneath here. That raises it up and down, okay? And there's another knob here that moves it side to side. And by moving it up and down and side to side, I can place the red dot right over the tree. I might double check the tree, the red dot, okay, the tree, the red dot. It's all lined up, okay. Now I can point it at something like a super bright star. Of course, star is a lot further away than a tree at two miles away, right? So the angle, this parallax, it's called parallax, is a little bit different. So if I aim it at that bright star and I look in the low power eyepiece, the, 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 the bright star might be a little bit off. What I'll do is I center up the bright star and then very quickly, I go and adjust the, uh, the two dials there, get it right on the bright star, go back, do it a couple of times. Now it's all set up, okay? Which means that if I know where I can find Saturn or Mars or Maybe if you're good at reading a star chart, um, uh, you might find some really challenging object. But the easy to find objects like the Orion Nebula, uh, maybe like uh, the Andromeda Galaxy, uh, star clusters, the planets, these kinds of things, they're easily found on star maps that, that uh, you can download from, uh, from our website. And uh, um, you, know, you can uh, start exploring the night sky. So I hope that you find this easy to do. I hope you have a lot of fun with your telescope. Uh, take my advice, take the scope outdoors, relax, enjoy yourself, uh, because that's what it's all about, uh, and explore the night sky. If you have any questions, you can contact us at Explore Scientific by going to www.explorescientific.com. Uh, you can download instruction manuals or you can chat live with us or you can dial 866-252-3811 and speak live with one of us. So anyways, keep looking up and thank you for tuning in.